plain old text. You know, really, almost anything you can do in a Word doc, you can just throw in uh, in, in any of these Outlook items. But I'm going to go back to the Appointment tab. Uh, there's probably a couple items on here that you haven't seen in the past versions of Outlook. I've got my normal invite attendees, which is going to give me uh, this picker. I can hit two, and I can choose my different things. So, you know, I can choose, you know, whatever I really need. I can show my uh, private Outlook contacts list if I wish. Choose items from there as well, just like you had before. Um, but I've also got this thing called Scheduling Assistant. Now, this is a very powerful tool uh, where Outlook will actually... Um, if permissions allow, of course, um, pull the what's called the free busy information from multiple users at once. So I'm going to, well, let's see what Donna's doing. Um, I'm going to type her name and as a shortcut, and this works in just about anywhere in Outlook, so uh, a little tip for you. I'm going to hold the control key and hit the K key on my keyboard, and that fills her name in. And that's useful uh, if it's a person in your contact list or address book, uh, it'll pull those just by hitting control K. And let's see what uh, Brent Heights is doing. And we know Angelica is going to be pretty busy, so let's pull in hers as well. So what this is doing is this is showing, uh, you know, an exploded view of what everybody's doing at this time frame that I've got selected. Makes it nice and easy for me to actually be able to schedule things. So you can move items down around here, you know, different times, different dates. Um, I can change those over here as well. Um, but you'll also notice that there's this thing talked about suggested times. Um, well, I don't have suggested times here because different people have themselves set for different working hours. Um, I'm actually going to remove a few people so I can uh, uh, give you a good example. And that might be because I was just out of town too and I changed my time zone back. I think that's what that is. So you can actually have Outlook suggest times for you. Um, now it's not going to take an effect if somebody's got an appointment that's you know hours and hours away. Uh, that's why whenever I'm setting up an appointment like that, that is going to be far away. You know, I'll set my meeting from nine to ten if it's from nine to ten. But if I've got a three-hour drive, I'm also going to put something in my calendar from six to nine, saying driving to so and so, just to help out everybody else with the Outlook auto scheduling. Under options, uh, I've got a couple a uh, couple other options here to you know not show working hours. Um, you know, uh, not show the calendar details. J it'll just show when things are blocked out. Um, I can click Add Rooms. So if I've got uh, things set up as, as such, I can add them from there. And of course, the Add Attendees that you're used to seeing. So you'll notice I can, you know, squeeze away in if I wanted to to get a more blown up view. Scroll around and see what things are, and you'll notice you can scroll, you know, uh, very very far um, throughout the whole month actually, and even further beyond. You can always get back to your calendar by clicking and, and just going back. Uh, you can set up a meeting workspace from here, actually. Uh, again, if you've got, um, you know, if you've got Groove and, and SharePoint or uh, Communicator, you can actually create your meetings from here. Um, you can show uh, uh, whether you want people to uh, propose new times or not. You can show as busy, tentative. Um, a lot of times what we'll do is start appointment at tentative. You know, it makes pretty basic sense, but um, it's something that's been there for quite a while and, and most people don't take advantage of. A reminder is a default at 15 minutes and you can change that in your options. A recurrence. I'll show you how recurrence works real quick if you're not uh, a very versed on, on uh, how recurring appointments work. You know, every Friday morning uh, we have a couple meetings, so we have those set in as recurrences. So what we do is weekly, every every one week, Friday morning, um, from eight o'clock, and seems like it usually goes to like noon, right? So you know, eight o'clock to ten o'clock, we're going to have that meeting. Duration of two hours, when we're going to start it, and how long to end, or just no end date, just go forever until we close it. So obviously what that's going to do is just going to save time by not having to enter appointments constantly. Great tool for meetings. But notice you can do a lot more than just weekly things. Um, I've got a very complex schedule. Um, so I've got a, actually a monthly rotation of things going on. You can set things to happen by the date. Or what I do is, you know, every second Tuesday of the month at 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. I can do something. One example of that is in our calendars. Um, every fourth Wednesday of the month at 10 in the morning, I've got a webinar. 
and this is how I scheduled it in Outlook so I never forget. Uh, you can change things to single appointments from the recurrence just by clicking remove. Now let's say I wanted to actually do something with a recurring appointment. Um, but I just want to put some details in for this one appointment, not for all of them. You know, some special, special case information that we're going to discuss, say, this Friday morning. But we're not going to discuss next Friday morning. And I'll show you what that looks like in, uh, in this webinar item. When I double-click it, uh, it says, this is a recurring appointment. What do you want to do? If I choose Open This Occurrence, I can edit the text from inside here. Um, I click Save and Close if I've got permissions to edit it. All the attendees are going to get the updated information for this. But next month's webinar is going to be separate. What we usually do this for is, you know, once a year, we'll put in our webinar schedule just for the fourth Wednesday of every month. And then a couple months out, as we're setting up our webinar um, agenda, you know, we'll edit this month's occurrence to say how to get the most out of Outlook 2007. You know, and we'll edit next month's occurrence to say, you know, whatever we're going to do next month. So just a little bit of detail about what you can do with recurring appointments. Uh, you can set things to show in different time zones. Uh, what that's useful for is uh, meetings are always going to happen in the time zone that you schedule them for. Uh, you can categorize meetings. Again, that category list is following us wherever we go. So I'm going to go back to my appointment. Um, again, lots, of, lots and lots of powerful stuff you can do with Outlook. Calendars are just, uh, just scratching the surface. Since a lot of people do use email for, uh, or Outlook for email, you know, I guess I'll show you some things in an email as well. Um, I'm going to compose a new email. We'll show you some things you can do. Um, again, the, the ribbon has options that are relevant uh, to the emails. Um, you've got all your message content type stuff up here. Um, you see, again, there's nothing to operate text until I actually have some text. So now, I'm, uh, since I'm in typing fields, I've got it. Um, same things you've been used to seeing for attach, um, add appointments, um, insert signatures, you can insert your business card, you know, the same type of things. Since I've got a tablet PC and I've got a pen, I can actually start inking. And I can just write on the screen right with my tablet. So I'm going to click start inking and just show you what that looks like. You know, just nice and neat. So I can, uh, you know, do things as I'm on the road, um, you know, not, at, not necessarily in uh, typing mode and type them that way. You can insert anything that we showed uh, already in the calendar functions. Um, under options, uh, some things here naturally that are only relevant for emails. Um, the BCC or blind carbon copy doesn't show up by default. This is where you'd add it from. Now note if I close this email, and I'm not going to save this, and if I go to a new email, the BCC field's going to stay there. Uh, the same would go from the from field. If you've got your mail set up so you're able to send email from another person so make it look like it come from them, this is where you'd add that. Um, this is where you would uh, request read and delivery receipts now. Um, you can actually do something cool called directing replies. Um, say you're sending out an email and uh, it, it's for you know a company outing. You're making the announcement, but you don't necessarily uh, want all the replies coming to you for who's RSVPing because you know Betty's maybe handling that. You can actually have replies sent to you know, somebody different for this, and then they'll go to that person. This is a very, very powerful box here. And how I got to that was just by, you know, you can click here and show all the different um, message options. Another cool thing in here, um, you've got voting buttons. Um, let's put a couple, uh, let's see, yes. Oh, how about red or blue? And then you can actually uh, make these voting buttons. Um, kind of just like a, a poll done through email. One of the things we actually use that for is what we're doing for food. Um, you can vote on what you're doing for lunch. Don't spend a lot of time on it though, you gotta get work, work done. Um, also note you've got uh, option to delay delivery. Um, again, that was another powerful message option. You know, whatever you might use this for, lots of different circumstances, but uh, know that within emails you can delay delivery as well. I have a lot of people ask me how I got my signature like I did, so we want to uh, show you how we do that as well. I've got myself in my contact list. So when you're looking at a contact, um, this, is, this is how you're going to set up a business card, by looking at your own contact list. You're going to have yourself in your contact list, uh, fill out all the relevant information, 